the Rockies are right over there. Don't just go to the conference. Go and see the Rocky Mountain National Park. Go hiking up at Bear Lake or something. Don't do what I did, which is just to come for the conference. Go and see the area. So welcome, I'm here to talk about who is building your code. There's a few people who could be building it. Uh, yourself, you're probably building your own code. You might have coworkers, you might have users, particularly if you're making open source code. And package managers, by which I mean the individuals running projects like PC Package, Code, Homebrew. So the first example, imagine you're the only one building your code. Frankly, get on your phone, start scrolling, you don't need to listen. If you're working by yourself, you can do literally whatever you want. I only ask that you don't interrupt me and you be careful when sharing advice. Because what works for you by yourself is not necessarily generally applicable. Okay, so now imagine you're on a project internally with a few coworkers. Um, at this point, you need to think about what your coworker is proficient with, what they like using in terms of build tools and build practices. Err on the side of using popular tools, um, but there is room for bespoke solutions depending on how much funding you have, how much time you have to devote to this. In this case, the only people building your code are the developers. So in this case, you can just enable all the developer features you want by default. That's totally fine. Uh, chances are your coworkers want to have all the things enabled, tests, benchmarks, uh, docs, all that kind of stuff. OK, now on to uh, smaller open source projects. Uh, once you're working in the open ecosystem of C++, you need to think harder about um, what are the uh, common standards for building code in C++. So that's obviously going to be things like CMake, but there's other uh, popular package managers kind of at the second and third popular spot. Those are also reasonable choices. Um, at this point, you need to think about portability. When it comes to internal projects, you have control over hardware. When it comes to open source, you don't. So you need to think more about, like, am I crafting build scripts, build solutions that are actually going to work for more than just my one machine? You need to start thinking about that kind of stuff. Uh, but at this point, the defaults aren't a big deal. You don't have a ton of users. So if you want to put the things that you prefer on by default, you can get away with that, and that's just fine. OK. But the real thing is, what if you have a big, popular project? So at this point, everyone, if, if everyone in the room knows about your project, this is the camp that you're in. Um, uh, at this point, you really need to care about using tools that everyone understands. So at this point, this really means that it's hard to get away with not using CMake. Sorry if you don't like that, but that is the reality. If you want a solution that everyone knows, that is the solution. So bespoke solutions aren't really going to fly. Uh, your custom Python scripts, uh, your bespoke shell-based build system, it's not going to cut it. But importantly, you need to disable as much as possible by default, because your users aren't going to care about tests, benchmarks, docs, any of that extra stuff. They just want your core library. Most of the time, we're dealing with libraries here. They just want your library. Everything else is prone to fail, uh, which means they're prone to have a bad experience for really no good reason. So the big thing is we care about user builds and developer builds. So what does that mean? A user build, if you're with, using CMake, is going to look like this. You're going to configure and build with no extra options. Maybe you specify a compiler or a build type, but you're certainly not going to be doing anything extra, uh, any project-specific settings you don't want to have to mess with, because users don't want to learn what those are. They're going to have different names on every project. They're not going to know what they are. So you need to make sure that your default configuration has all these things disabled by default. So compiler warnings, tests, benchmarks, examples, docs, um, anything like that. And by compiler warnings, I don't just mean W error. Uh, I also mean all warnings, period. And it matters because I have to routinely build a project that has so many warnings that it actually fills up the CI logs. And then CI won't show me any more console output because this third-party project has so many warnings. So please be kind to your users. Please disable everything. It maximizes the chances of success. Uh, it makes builds are as fast as possible. If they're accidentally building tests or benchmarks or examples, they're just wasting their time because users don't care about that. Uh, and it keeps the console output as clean as possible. So that's what a user build is. So the opposite of that is a developer build. So in this case, the way that I implement that is with a CMake preset. I happen to call mine dev, call it what you would like. So the preset is going to be a set of configure options that are going to enable all the warnings and warnings to theirs, all of your tests, benchmark examples, docs, everything extra in your project is going to be in the developer build. Uh, this is what anyone who works on the project, maintainers are, going to be using, as well as CI, is almost certainly going to use this configuration. So with this, you want to maximize the chance of catching errors. Um, for example, if you change an API and you need to fix an example project, you want to know about that as soon as possible. So you want all of these things enabled. 
and it ensures that everyone developing a project is using the same settings. So this dichotomy is really useful. So think about your user builds that your users have and the developer builds that everyone working on the project is going to use, and you will have a much happier time maintaining your project. Thank you.